Okay, back in the raised bed garden, I said I'd do a video on the chard that wouldn't die. This is giant, this is Ford Hook giant Swiss chard, which is an open pollinated. I planted this last year. It performed great all last year. It doesn't matter how hot it gets, it grows. I watched it during the winter. We got some most of the winter. And then it got real cold. It got down to about 15. That's cold. Now you northerns, you know, y'all are laughing. That's 15 is cold in Texas. Got down to about 15 degrees and stayed there for about a week. You know, just up and down, uh, 15, 20. Uh, and it it finally killed it. Well, I thought. Knocked it back. Just a little dead stump there. Uh, then the. Uh, it started getting up to 30 and 40 degrees, and I'll be darned if it didn't start sprouting out. So yesterday was was uh, May 31st. I cut it down completely. Just brought some some little shears in, and just because it was just so it was a foot tall, two feet tall. And uh, <clears throat> chard. If you don't know what chard tastes like, the stalks taste somewhat like celery to me, and the leaves uh, are almost like a green, like a. I, I'm not much of a green eater, but uh, like a mustard green or something like that, but we use them for lettuce on sandwiches and stuff like that. It's it's a real good taste. Maybe a spinachy, lettucey taste, uh, and and especially when the when the leaves are real small, the leaves will get huge. Uh, they'll get uh, uh, 12, 14 inches long, eight inches wide, uh, kind of an oval shape. Uh, but anyway. It came back. This is chard that I planted last year. Survived all winter long, and for Texas, a harsh winter, and uh, has has come back. And we've been eating off of it. And I finally, like I said, it got so big, and the leaves were leaves were big. I let them get too big, and they would have been tough. So I went ahead and cut it down. And I'll show you. I'll do an update in a few days and show you that it is just going crazy again. Giant Ford Hook, Ford Hook, giant Swiss chard. And man, it's uh, it, like I say, I'm not much of a green eater, but uh, this stuff, if you like greens, if you like lettuce, if you like spinach, if you like uh, to eat greens, and you can cook these just like you would uh, greens or, or spinach or something like that, man, these things go crazy. And they won't die, the chard that won't die. I'll show you an update here in the next few days. Okay, here's the chard about a week later. Uh, I'll check my the date on the first uh, video to make sure and put it in the put it on the screen. But about a week later, I have mulched it. Uh, we got another another load of uh, wood chips. But anyway, this is the chard that wouldn't die. Uh, it's just, and I have found out. I heard a guy today say uh, at work today say that the chard is kind of like asparagus and it has some, some deep deep roots. He said. Roots can go six feet deep, so I don't know this. Uh, <laughs> but I'm, I went ahead and did the video today because they were going to cut uh, a bunch of it and have it for supper tonight. So we uh, we'll walk down here. There's some small baby pepper plants I just put out not too long ago. Uh, pretty good stand of um, golden eye uh, peas. Golden eye cream peas, I think. Anyway, here's some more of the chard, and uh, but it just uh, again I planted it over a year ago, probably a, almost a year and a half ago. Planted it probably March or February of uh, uh, February March, maybe April of last year. Survived the winter uh, for us a uh, pretty cold winter, and uh, has just come back, gone crazy. I cut it back to nothing, and it is uh, in about a week it's grown. Six or eight inches, ten inches. That's uh, you know the grasshoppers are getting their share of it. Um, got some grasshopper issues, but the chart itself is just uh, it's the chart it wouldn't die.